Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. Today we're going to have a look at indirect tax, so let's get straight into it. So the first thing you need to have a look at with VAT is output VAT. So what that is, is just VAT due from a company out to HMRC. So if you remember that in your mind, it is VAT going out of the company, output VAT to HMRC, then that might help you remember the difference between output VAT and input VAT. So next we have input VAT and that is amounts that we can claim back from HMRC. So if we've bought purchases in the year, in the month, whatever time period that might be, then we might be able to reclaim the VAT that we've paid on such purchases. So it's important that you get your head around what's input VAT and what's output VAT. So input VAT is VAT coming into our company, into the company. Output VAT is going out to HMRC. And then the third thing is that VAT is an indirect tax. And what we mean by that is that it's collected by a company at the time of sale and then later on it is settled with HMRC. So there's a bit of a time delay. So it's not like PAYE, so pay as you earn, where you're taxed from your salary at the end of every month or whenever your salary is paid and that's sent to HMRC directly from a company. So that would be a direct tax. VAT is an indirect tax. So if we go back to output VAT, this is on the likes of sales, sales returns, and sales credit notes, that sort of thing. So in terms of the ledger books that you have in a company, you're going to have something called a sales day book. You're also going to have a sales returns day book, and then a cash book receipts book. So the sales day book lists all sales that have been made on credit. The sales returns day book lists the likes of adjustments for returns and um, credits, overcharges, that sort of thing. And then the cash book receipts is for other receipts that are not on credit. So items that are not on credit, which would be recorded in the sales day book. Next, we have input VAT. So in terms of input VAT, that relates to purchases and um, purchase returns, that sort of thing. And you're going to have four ledger books in this case. So you're going to have a purchase day book, which records all of the purchases that are made on credit. A purchases returns day book, which is returned goods, credit notes, um, adjustments for overcharges. And then we have a cash book payments made. So they're expenses that are paid by the business that are not on credit. So if they were on credit, they'd be recorded in the purchases day book. And then finally, we have the petty cash book. So that's for small expenses. So you might have a, a petty cash tin at work, which is for the likes of things like coffee purchases or very, very small purchases, maybe for buying things like a lock, repairs, that sort of thing. Usually a company keeps a float in the petty cash tin of about £100 and that's recorded separately. But all of these are important because they feed the VAT control account. So if we take a look at what a VAT control account would look like, if we look at the debits first, there are all your purchases. So on the left hand side of the VAT control account, you have the purchases day book VAT element and then you have your cash book VAT element. So again, all items that are not included in the purchases day book that were made on cash, um, petty cash book the VAT element and then you might have VAT allowable from EU acquisitions and you might even have something called bad debt relief. So they would all appear on the debit on the left hand side of this back control account and then if we look on the right that's where you have all your sales items so you've got your sales day book VAT element, your cash book VAT element for again items that are not in the sales day book that were cash, you've got VAT due on EU acquisitions and then potentially corrections so if we actually had a look at the journals that were made in order to get those into the VAT control account if it was a purchase just a standard purchase you'd have your debit to whatever nominal it is in the statement of profit and loss so say gas for example and then you'd have a debit to the VAT control account hence why it's shown on the left hand side here and then you would have a credit to the purchase ledger control account if those items were made on credit. Now on the right when we're recording a sale that's got VAT on that's on credit we would credit income in a statement of profit and loss we would credit VAT with the VAT element and then we would debit the sales ledger control account with the gross value. So you can see that there. So if you're ever asked an exam, the opposite. So you might be asked, okay, how do we account for a purchase returns item in VAT? Well, if you have a look at the above there, normally we would debit the net, debit the VAT and credit the gross. But if it's a return item, then it needs to appear on the right hand side of this back control account. So we would do the opposite. 
So it would be a credit to the statement of profit and loss with the net, a credit to VAT, and then a debit to the purchase ledger control account. And they might do that with sales as well. So they might just say, we've got a sales returns item. How do we account for that in the VAT control account? Well, okay, we would just do a debit to the sales returns nominal in the statement of profit and loss or the sales nominal. We do a debit to VAT and then we do a credit to the sales ledger control account with the gross value again if that was made on credit. So we'd just effectively be reducing what we need to pay in a sales ledger control account and also reducing what we need to pay to HMRC for the VAT. So if we take a look at the very bottom of here where we've got our totals. So if you're ever asked in the exam again, do we have an asset, as in an amount that we can reclaim back from HMRC, or do we have a liability, as in a credit amounts due to HMRC, then you can quickly work this out. So if the values that are on the left-hand side are larger than the values on the right, then you've got a reclaim because you've got more VAT on the purchases that you've made in the period compared to the sales. So you've got more VAT that you can reclaim back than the sales. However, if the total value on the right is greater than the value on the left, then we've got a liability because it means our VAT on sales, etc., is greater than the amount that we can reclaim back on purchases. So that's just a quite quick, easy way of understanding if we've got an asset or a liability. Now, in terms of the VAT payment journal, all we need to do here is to debit the VAT control account and credit the bank because we're going to credit the bank for the payment that we're going to be making to HMRC and we're going to debit the VAT control account to basically wipe out the balance that's due in there. But if we're making a VAT reclaim, then the journal's different. So we would have a debit to the bank because we're receiving money from HMRC. So we would increase what we've got in our bank as a debit and we would credit the VAT control account to again wipe out any balance that's left in there. And then finally, if we have a, another look at an example of a VAT return, in box one at the top, we have VAT on sales. So that's just the VAT element. And in box two, we have VAT due on acquisitions from the EU. And then in box three, we have the total of box one and box two. If we move down to box four, we have VAT reclaimed on purchases in the period. And then in box five, we have the net VAT due. So if box three is greater than box four, then we owe HMRC. Because again, it means that our output VAT is larger than our input VAT. If box four is greater than box three, then we can claim that VAT back from HMRC. It's as simple as that. Then we have box six, which is just the total value of the sales in the period. And then we have box seven, which is just the total value of purchases in the period. So don't get them mixed up between the boxes at the top. So I hope you found this video useful. Please do hit the like button if you liked it or you did find it useful. Consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.